Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow right now up 130, Nasdaq up 45, S&P's up 16 and a half. Let's go over to our members to Teddy Cakes that as we do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at forex-trading-unlocked.com. Teddy Cakes that, what's going on, brother? Oh, we have a heat wave in Chicago. That's what's going on. I think that's the greatest news of the day. That's a beautiful <laughs> thing, man. <laughs> right? Uh, it's it's about time, right? Quality you're, of life is living, man. You're, totally. You're in the middle of March. That's that that totally makes sense. And what's a heat wave, man? What it? 45, 50. Uh, today, I think we're going to be uh, 55 degrees. Oh, that's a oh. heat wave for sure, man. Yeah. Well, it's time to get considering to we were zero just a week and a yeah. half ago. Yeah, it's great. Wow, that's good amazing. old windy city. That's a heat wave for sure. That, that's definitely a heat wave. So. You know, we're going through the, the, the Brexit deal. Like, mm -hmm. finally, the, the euro got a little movement. You know, we hadn't had the euro get any movement. Uh, this pound, man, you know, like the bottom line is that, at, like at Tommy was talking about a little bit earlier, it's like every vote, you can just buy the pound. I mean, after it collapses. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> That's the key part. <laughs> Isn't it? I, I agree. It's almost like it is, it, it's the buy dip scenario with what's going on right now. Yeah. Well, you know what's so cool? Like, this is. A really big deal. There's no doubt about it. But the market is saying, like Boris Johnson just come across saying that there is going to be a deal before they get out and they're getting out. But the market is saying that it was not going to be a hard Brexit. That, no. That's how I'm looking at you it. You do anyway. see? No, I could completely yeah. agree. But you do see a little bit of that fear every time that they say, "Oh, maybe oh, there yeah. might be something we're not sure of," right? And they say, "Okay, right. no, 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 it's not." Right. Yeah. yeah, right, yeah. Well, I think what I think what the market's doing, gentlemen, is kind of discounting the news. Whereas the news is, is sensationalized. I mean, what, is, what do the Europeans have to talk about now except for Brexit? Right. Yeah. You know? Right. So, and I think that, I mean, we know that there's three key votes that they're going to have next week. If it doesn't work out properly, whatever, things may get extended, whatever. Um, the reality is Brexit's going to happen. Um, I think that the news sensationalizes everything a little bit too much about it. And the market is showing you that um, hard Brexit, soft Brexit, Brexit's going to happen. And like we've talked about before, like... If the politicians may not agree on things from one day to the next to get this thing smoothed out, but the trade is not going to stop. The, the UK is not going to stop trading with the rest of the EU and vice versa. You know, like everyone's not on hold. They're going to keep on going. And I think you're going to see them as time goes by next week and into the following weeks that that's pretty much what they're going to do is say that you know, if we can't make a decision, nothing is going to change except for the fact that. The UK is maintaining their sovereignty, and they are definitely breaking away as far as policy and things like that. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, yeah. There's no doubt, man. There's no doubt. That's what it says every time that pound trades higher, man. 132, right? I mean, we're sitting right under 131.87 right now. Yeah. yeah. And the dollar is, is kind of an offer right now too. So it's making this lift in the pound and the euro. I mean, right now all your majors are gaining against the dollar. Um, right. We had buy signals um, a couple days ago and sell signals to you know support this. Our targets were hit over the past uh, yesterday and today. So, and if you look at like the euro, it, it, it spiked low below 112 last week. Now where it's at, it's really at the bottom of the support range where this bit, basically $3, $4 range has been in for months. You know, so this rally in the short run, it looks nice, you know, or if, especially if you got bought this dip. Um, but I wouldn't be a major bull right now, you know, in the euro versus the dollar because there's no reason for it to accelerate right now, like up to like the 120 area, you know, but you can see it back around 113, 114, but then pull back on any given day a, a buck. You know, it seems yeah. like the sell-offs are definitely harsher. Yeah. Yeah, they, we have the chart right up now, Teddy. You can see the sell-off definitely. Well, what, what's interesting, though, right, is that you, you definitely, the euro broke down and it came back inside that range. So it's like, okay, yeah. you know, why? You know what I mean? It, that, that's the other side of it, I think. You know, it's like, okay. And, that, and are you looking at the low from last week, how it spiked yeah. down like yes. that? It was a very heavy sell-off day. And then the next day, you could see that it was just started to get absorbed. Yeah. And it was just overzealous spike. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's quite a spike, right? 113.20 to 111.77. But then, yeah, we're right back up to 113.20 almost. Right. 113.07. Right. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, and that could be that could be because the algo is really running the stops, you know, that really could have been a move that okay. was just, you know, to, in today's world, that's why I don't, you can't fight against the machines and you have these spikes that are kind of erroneous out of nowhere where here it looked like the end of the world and everyone was preaching at the end of that day, like the euro is finally going to start getting slammed. 
and then look what happens. Surprise. We're right back into the, this <laughs> range. Yeah, so, hey, what do, what do you think? The, the yen, you know, is, is hanging above this 110. We are at 111. It seems like it's just hanging there. Right. The yen is just like, it kind of looks like it wants to be a bull. It looks more, I think it's more neutral than anything. Okay. And this 112 psychological area seems like it's a really big resistance area to breach, you know? Yeah. So, and I think they're really watching the Nikkei. And I think this, with what's going on in China, like we talked about with the Wan and things like that, and to, since we know there really is not going to be any major news with this going forward, I think that the yen is pretty much in limbo. Okay. Because look at what's going on with the dollar right now. We have the pound. Every currency is making a big move, even the U.S. dollar, Canada. The only two that aren't doing anything is the Australian dollar, U.S. dollar, and the, and the U.S. dollar yen. Both in the same trade zone. Both that are hanging on all these same different, like, you know, as they're reassessing how to balance trade throughout Asia. So I think that that's really what you're seeing with those currencies is that unless there's a reason to rock Japan, it's kind of stable and same with the Australian dollar, you know, it's kind of going to be range trading and not really excessively moving. Yeah, so it's the it's the euro and the pound that's running everything, right? That's what he's saying, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, right. realist, you know and, what I mean? It's going to be And then there's also remember we've been watching the US dollar Swiss. Yes. Yeah. Today, it finally gets back. I think it's only about 50 cents above uh, parity. That's when I looked at it before we went on the air. Okay. So it's heading back towards parity. And that's when it hits parity, you're probably going to see, that's why I said these other markets, they've got this little run. Give them a little more juice. The Swiss hits parity. And then if it holds there and bobbles around there, we go more to it back into a wide range trade again and all those currencies for probably another week. I'm telling you, man, you know, right, right now, I mean, you've been doing this for a long time in the currency market, but it really seems to me that these currencies are really running the market, too. And I, 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 the correlation is, is kind of wild because sometimes, like, if the dollar is going up or down, the correlation in the marketplace is not as direct as it is right now because it seems like when that the dollar starts pulling back, our own S&P, for some reason, doesn't like it. <laughs> so I was like, okay, why are you pulling back? It seemed that the companies would make more money with a weaker dollar, but market-wise, right? You would think so. Yeah, but market-wise, uh, it does. It's doing a little bit different right now, so it's yeah. going to be intriguing. Watching Although we have Boeing, we have the Boeing incident, which oh, yeah. we're definitely aware of that news in Chicago. So I, I mean, bet. that's really hitting the, the S and P index. No, oh, yeah. there's no doubt, and that's yeah. right because Boeing moved from Seattle to Chicago uh, what five years ago or something. Oh, the, okay. the headquarters are in Chicago now. Yeah, interesting, man. And how much is their stock down just in the past oh. week? Big, big dollars, man. right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean 11, the Nasdaq, and everything yeah. else was up the other day, and the, and the S and P's were down because of Boeing. Right? Yeah, no doubt. Well, listen, man, you have a great week, safe week. Appreciate the update, Teddy. Enjoy that summer All right, weather, guys. man. We'll see how the Brexit vote goes and talk about it next week. Awesome, I love it, man. We look forward to it. And man. listen, folks, right. you can Take reach care. you can reach Teddy every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back.